to give God glory, come out to give God honor, come out to give God praise, amen, on this morning. He kept us all week long. He held back accident and he held back incident. So we come for no other reason but to lift him up this morning through every song that's going to be sung. Amen. We want to give God the glory and give God the honor and give God the praise for it. Let's go before the Lord in prayer. Father God, again, we say thank you. And you have kept us and now you have blessed us. So we come this morning to lift up holy hands to you on this morning, God. We pray, God, that you would open up the floodgates of heaven. Pour us out a blessing on this morning. Bind us together this morning with cards can be so easily broken, God. I thank you, God, for those that are pressed our way out this morning, God. Thank you in advance, God, for every song that's going to be sung, God. I pray that we come with the anointing and we come with power this morning, God. I thank you in advance for the preached word, God. Let it come with power. Let it come with the anointing this morning, God. Let it come straight from the press of heaven. Oh, God, bind us together like never before on this morning, God. Touch somebody. Heal somebody. Set somebody free this morning, God. Go into the hospital, of God. Touch that mother, father, sister, or brother this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus, God. So, God, we thank you for what you've already done this morning. We look for what you're going to do, God, for the remainder of this service, God. And for that, we give you the honor and the glory and the power. In Jesus' name, thank God. Amen. Let's worship, sir.
Praise the Lord. <laughs> Been a good place to be this morning. Glory. Hallelujah. I believe the glory of God has fell this morning. Hallelujah. Bless his holy and high name. <laughs> My God. That's how we worship God. Spirit and truth. <laughs> And whom the Lord sets free is free indeed. Glory. I feel free this morning. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is therefore liberty. I believe that with all my heart this morning. Got liberty. My God. We're going to continue worshiping the Lord in our tithes and our offerings. What an honor to be able to do that. To honor God with that little 10% that He allows us to make. You know, God's been faithful to me every, every time I tithe. He's always took care of me. And I'm thankful for that this morning. So, brothers, we're going to take up tithes and offering. Father, we speak a Father's blessing over this body of believers. Father God, asking you, Lord God, to bless them. Father God, God, you said in your word, Father God, that you'd open up heaven and God pour them out a blessing, God, that they couldn't contain Father God, we believe you at your word this morning, oh God. God, that you're able to meet our needs and their needs, God. In the mighty name of Jesus, we praise you and we love you. Amen. Amen.
welcome Randall King. Yeah. Visitor the first time after that, your family. You're welcome. <laughs> this morning, uh, I guess my text, everybody knows about my blood pressure. It's been fluctuating and everything, but boy, I feel so good right now. Amen. Amen. Well, you just don't know, this Miss Children's Church, but uh, you just don't know until you start having side effects with your vision and your, your head hurting and this old body wearing and tearing and, but, uh, and, your, and your mind being foggy, not able to think and, you know, grasp the things that you once could. But, boy, this morning, I, just, I, feel, I tell you what, I do feel like a brand new man. I mean, my God. <laughs> when the joy of the Lord is shrink. Amen. But the text I'm going to use this morning, it's it's something that's just been in my heart, but I've been thinking about for a week. But uh, we're going to be in Luke chapter 15, and I've heard many messages about the prodigal son. And uh, I've been that prodigal son a few times in my life. And, uh, but... Something stuck out to me this time, something the Lord was showing me. What well, you know, a lot of people, we're to see the good in people. See, see the good in one another. The Paul said there, that is within this flesh dwelleth no good thing. The only thing that's good about me be the Lord. But my text this morning is going to be the prodigal son's father. I like to emphasize on the father. This morning, and y'all can sit down, be seated. We're going to do some reading this morning, but uh, we're going to start in verse 11 after I pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, Father God, we just ask you this morning, Lord God, to bless your word. Father God, we pray, Father God, to accomplish that in which you send it, Father God, and God, that it wouldn't return void. And Father God, we just pray, Father God, if there'd be anybody, if there'd be a prodigal son in here this morning, oh, Lord God of heaven, that needs help, oh, God, that, God, that you would just show them through the Holy Ghost that, God, your word, Father God, would be like a hammer and like a fire that breaketh the rock in pieces, oh, God. God, we know a broken heart and a contrite spirit, God, you won't despise. But, Father God, if we would get help this morning, Father God, help us in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. I'm going to be reading now the New Living Translation. Jesus was dealing with the Pharisees in chapter 15 about how they was talking about him being with sinners and how they were self-righteous. But Jesus, through these parables, starts dealing with them. And as he got to the prodigal son, it says, to illustrate the point further, Jesus told them this story. A man had two sons. The younger son told his father, I want the share of your estate now before you die. So his father agreed to divide his wealth between his sons. A few days later, this younger son packed all his belongings and moved to a distant land. And there he wasted all his money in wild living. About the time his money ran out, A great famine swept over the land, and he began to starve. He persuaded a local farmer to hire him, and the man sent him into his fields to feed the pigs. The young man became so hungry that even the pods he was feeding the pigs looked good to him, but no one gave him anything. When he finally came to his senses, he said to himself, At home, even the hired servants have good food, enough to spare, and here I am dying of hunger. I will go home to my father and say, Father, I have sinned against both heaven and you. I am no longer worthy of being called your son. Please take me on as a hired servant. So he returned home to his father, and while he was still a long way off, His father saw him coming. 
Filled with love and compassion, he ran to his son, embraced him, kissed him. His son said to him, Father, I have sinned against both heaven and you. I am no longer worthy of being called your son. But his father said to the servant, Quick, bring the finest robe in the house, put it on him, get a ring for his finger and sandals for his feet. And kill the calf we have been fattening. We must celebrate with a feast, for this son of mine was dead and has now returned to life. He was lost, but now he is found. So the party began. Meanwhile, the older son was in the fields working. When he returned home, he heard music and dancing in the house, and he asked one of the servants what was going on. Your brother is back, he was told. And your father has killed the fatted calf. We are celebrating because of his safe return. The older brother was angry and wouldn't go in. His father came out and begged him. But he replied, All these years I have slaved for you and never once refused to do a single thing you told me to. And in all that time, you never gave me even one young goat for a feast with my friends. Yet with this son of yours comes back after squandering your money on prostitutes, you celebrate by killing the fatted calf. His father said to him, Look, dear son, you have always stayed with me, and everything I have is yours. We had to celebrate this happy day for your brother was dead and has come back to life. He was lost, but now he is found. The text of my message this morning is the prodigal son's father. I mean, the prodigal son's father was full of mercy, grace, the love of God towards his sons. It wasn't just in the natural, but in the spiritual To me, we got a lot of sons in the house of God today. People that's trying to be sons of God, they want to be taught the word of God, and there's a famine in the land of truth, of the word of God. We're thankful here in New Destiny that we have fathers in this house, spiritual fathers that's willing to rebuke, rebuke, Exhort with all long suffering, thankful to be found in a house of many spiritual fathers here at New Destiny that'll correct us with love. Like this father showed, I never paid attention to how the father, I always concentrate on the bad things. That's the way our Adam nature is. A lot of times we concentrate on what the person has done or what they ain't done. That's a carnal mind. That's an enmity with God. Because Paul said, there is therefore no good in, in me except Christ Jesus. The only good about me is the Lord. When we start seeing fault in people. You know how quick we are to hear something about somebody and how fast we are to judge them. Without even knowing, there's two sides to every story. I'm thankful there's a God in heaven this morning that knows the heart and the intent. Huh? My God. How quick we are to judge and see the bad in people. Instead of having a heart of love and compassion. This prodigal son's father reminded me of Jesus because he knew how to be a son and be a reflection of his father that was in heaven. He knew his meat was to do the will of his father to finish, my goodness, works of his father on Calvary. But of thinking about the prodigal son's father, and the love he has. He never once went into, you know, back then that the inheritance, they left an inheritance for their children, the flock, the sheep, the goats. They, they, they 
collected it and saved it up for the next generation because the sons was an extension of the father's honor. Huh? Was an extension of the father's honor that they was carrying on the legacy, the name of their father. But here's this son that squandles away. He's going to go out and just leave it up. He's going to blow it all. But this father, not one time, does the word of God say, huh? Say that that father said, no, you're not. Or tore him down. But what I do see through spiritual eyes that there ain't a doubt in my mind. Back then they lived in villages. And most of them had walls around the city. And had gates. And what I could see this father, just from what I read in the Word of God, what I could see him doing was watching. Looking through the eye of faith, believing that God the Father was going to work on his son and bring him back home. That the Word of God says it takes a broken heart and a contrite spirit. And a broken heart God won't despise. I believe that father was watching every single day for his son, seeing through the eye of faith, not giving up hope, not giving up hope on him, that there was still breath in his lungs, so there was hope that he watched for him. And back in that culture, back in them days, when you brought dishonor to your father or your mother, they took you outside them gates, and they stoned you to death. But here's this father watching for his son that when he finally does see his son coming, this is the way I visualize it. He didn't just say, hey, what would you do with my money? (laughs) Or, hey, who do you think you are? Or, what are you doing here? And cast him out. But, boy, the father doesn't have been a son that now was once a father. And he goes running. He goes running to his son. Why? Because their custom was to take them outside and to stone them to death. But his father didn't want him to do that. He seen the good in his son. He said, I'm going to take off them filthy rags and put you on a robe of righteousness. (laughs) My God in heaven. Woo! Huh? His son come walking. Didn't get a word out. He didn't try to convince his father, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I shouldn't have done it. His father come running because his son was naked. His son was naked before everybody. The shame, the guilt, the condemnation. The world had done shoot him up. But the father come running. And back then when they wore them robes or whatever you call them, you couldn't show, Chris, you couldn't even show your ankle. It was nakedness. It was a shame. And it was a shame for the older to go running too. But he ran to him. He wanted to take off them old filthy rags and give him a robe of righteousness. My God, it will just stir us up. The Holy Ghost starts to bring things back to our remembrance. When my father come running to me. Huh? Shh. The robes, but the best part is the ring. The ring that he puts on his finger. In the Old Testament, a ring like that meant authority. We also know it represents the Holy Spirit. But, and while he says, kill the fatted calf, his brother, that stayed, that had been there, that had done everything right, dotted every I, crossed every T, obeyed his father. Here he gets in the wrong spirit and was mad because his brother come home. Instead of being welcoming to his brother, he was mad at his father for putting a robe back on him. For giving him his authority back. And not only did he give him his authority back as a son, he took him back in and he gave him the garment that would make him his son. 
and gave him the authority back that made him a son. And his sandals. Everybody forgets them sandals. <laughs> Why are they important? Because the word's like a lamp under my feet. <laughs> Whoa! Huh? It matters about them sandals. My God, it meant that he wasn't he wasn't going to be a servant. He was going to be a son. What kind of love? Here's his brother, mad because he's done it all right. Well, you know who that reminds me of? The one Jesus is rebuking with these parables, the Pharisees. Huh? Him old self-righteous Pharisees, old legalistic Pharisees, that boy, they just do it all right, Hannah. They dot every I, cross every T. They worry about the outside of the sepulcher, or worrying about making it white. But the Word of God says they're full of extortion and dead man bones. Always pulling the finger. Never looking at self. Never examining self. Always doing it right. But that's who Jesus is rebuking. Is them old Pharisees. And here's his oldest son. His oldest son. Why? Why this? Why that? He didn't have the love of God in his heart. But how did the, how did the father treat that son? He loved him. He wasn't worried about worldly, material things. He wasn't worried about possessions. You know what he was worried about? He was worried about having a relationship with his son. And the son having a relationship with the father. That's what it's about. The Word of God says, though a righteous man fall seven times. How many times in a day should he rise? Seven. The Word of God says we all sin and come short of the glory of God, but I know when I was younger, when I was a younger Christian, when I would fall, boy, the shame, the guilt, the condemnation, it would eat me alive, and I'd walk around in shame and guilt and condemnation. I didn't feel like a son. Huh? I felt like that old prodigal son did, Chris. But as I got older and my relationship with the Father grew through His beloved Son, Jesus, and what He paid at Calvary, that precious blood, my God, and I started to walk in sonship, realizing who He was, that when I see and come short of the glory of God, He wasn't about the fallen. It was about the getting up and shaking off the shame and shaking off the condemnation. Glory that even when my heart condemned me, God was greater than my heart. <laughs> my God. I feel like this morning, if there's anybody here, this ain't a long, drew out message. This is my heart this morning. It's a Father's heart, full of love. I want to see nobody. When you start getting that, you learn to be a son and you get around spiritual fathers that teach you things, teach you the Word of God, how to apply the Word of God, that there's safety in a multitude of counselors. When we get in that, in a body like that, we are blessed and we're highly favored of the Lord. And if we'll listen and submit to Him and yield to Him, they're watchers over our souls. We can grow in the Lord and learn to be sons that one day we can grow on up and be spiritual fathers, Brother Earl. That we can help somebody else. That we can take that knowledge and that wisdom and that understanding of the Word of God and not be judgmental with it. But take it to them and feed it to them with sincere milk of the Word that they'll grow thereby that one day they'll get on the meat. That that legacy will just be passed on down to the next son, the next daughter of the Most High God. The legacy ain't about Brent's legacy, David's, Jared's. It's about the Lord's. It's about Jesus' legacy. That he was the son 
and show him the reflection of his father. To do the will of his father. So if there be anybody here today and you're walking in that shame, that guilt, that condemnation, the Lord's willing to deliver it. Time and time and time again. When you get sick and tired of trying to do it in your own power, and you stop leaning to your own understanding, and we start applying the Word of God, whom the Lord says free is free indeed. I've been there. I don't know how I'm going to give this up. I don't know how I'm going to stop that. Get around wise counsel. Get in the Word of God. Like Pastor said the other night, pray that that sin stinks in the nostrils. That you get sick and tired of being sick and tired. God will put you in a place to where His Word is like a hammer and like a fire that it will break the rock in pieces. I love to watch people get delivered, but I like to be delivered too. That's what it's about. <laughs> Woo! Huh? And when that Holy Ghost starts bringing the remembrance, the sin in your life, and then bringing the Scripture to remembrance, that's that fire. And that's a hammer. Try to break that rock in pieces. And when you get to the house of God and the Word delivered, is lighting you up. Praise God, boy, that flesh don't like it. But when you start going after the Spirit of God, Lord, it feels good when He starts cutting things loose from your life. Amen. Thank you, choir. If you've got an area in your life this morning, <laughs> whoo, I'll tell you, I'm free. <laughs> My God, feeling good this morning. You ain't got to leave the same shape that you come. My God, you can put off the dead works of the flesh and go after the Spirit of God. It don't matter what you've done in history, boy. That devil take you. you can't do it. You're right. You can't do it. What Jesus done. It's learning to be a son. That when you fall, you get back up and you shake it off and realize who you are in Him. I announce your identity in Him. But if you've got something this morning, I've seen people getting delivered up here left and right. There's even things in my mind, my blood pressure going up and down, my mind foggy, enemy in my ear. Well, you didn't get to study this message like you did the rest of them. Boy, you didn't get to fan it out, but I couldn't collect nothing in my mind. The more I read, it was just going. And then you get the devil riding your coattail. Huh? But I had the Lord had to remind me that I'm a son and whom the Lord says free is free indeed. That he paid it all by the blood. He set me free. He by his stripes were healed. But it, when we start applying is when we believe it. When we come to an end of self. I think sometimes as men of God and women of God, I think sometimes we, we think people think we should be this way all the time. Y'all superhuman or something? <laughs> this old guy right here needs the Lord. <laughs> and there's going to be times I might pray for you, but I need you to pray for me. And part of being a, learning to be a spiritual father and to be a son is recognizing the symptoms. Of somebody get sick. I ain't talking about just physical. When you start seeing physical sickness, it's usually something to do with spiritual sickness. <laughs> Amen. If you want to be delivered of the physical, you've got to be delivered of the spiritual. That gets to the root of it. Lord, lay the axe to it. That's wisdom. Sometimes we need that Holy Ghost fire just to light that darkness inside of us up. <laughs> Woo! Sometimes we just got to say, come on in, Lord. 
Huh? Well, they call them skeletons in your closet. Sometimes you just need the Lord to kick that door in. But he's a gentleman. He won't. He waits for you to open it. And then when he walks in, he cleans house. He cleans house. Brother, I seen you get help today. Yes, sir. Huh? Amen. Amen. We'll pray for you. But if you need help this morning before you leave, I pray you come and get prayer. Lord, let's, let's get you some help. Why go home with that thing to be tormented? Why walk out of here in tackles and chains and fetters? I mean, my God, the Lord wants to set you free. <laughs> I want you to know this morning, the Lord loves you. He's just waiting for the son to come home. He's waiting for his son to come home or his daughter. Amen. Huh? Come on. Hey, this altar's open. That's what it's for. You're going to interrupt me. You need help this morning. You come on. Amen. Love you, church.
Good word, brother. Good word. You know, the prodigal son is probably every one of us at one time or another, more or less. Some of us more, and some of us way more, and some of us more than we care to admit. I helped raise three boys. And one thing I heard real often when my boys were in trouble was, yeah, but, but he, but he, but he, because we compare ourselves to someone else, but he. Well, let me tell you, your butt's going to keep you out of heaven. you got to get like the prodigal son. you got to be honest. Honest with yourself and especially honest with the Father. Don't you hate to be lied to? Isn't it so much better if somebody just comes and says, I did it. I was going to do it, but I didn't get time. I mean, let's just be honest. God knows anyway 
What are you going to tell him he doesn't already know? What are you going to confess that he hasn't already seen? What are you going to do that hasn't already been done? He's seen it all over and over and over. Confession is a wonderful thing. But the first thing is be honest. Be honest with yourself so you can be honest with other people. If I don't look in the mirror and examine myself, I can't be honest with you. If I don't treat myself honestly and admit what kind of man I was and could be again, how can I give you any kind of advice? But the prodigal son was honest. He just came home and he said, Dad, I blew it. There's an old joke that says he spent all his money and it enumerates all how he spent so much on booze and so much on women and so much on a fast car and so much on this. And when you total it all up, he had $5,000 left. And they said, well, what happened to that? And he said, oh, I guess I just wasted it. But he was honest in what he was saying, you know. We're not even honest with ourselves many times. Be careful. That old yeah, but will come up. Yeah, but I didn't have a choice, but I did but you didn't, but he didn't, but she didn't. No, <coughs> be honest with yourself. I am my own worst enemy. Absolutely. Well, let's get some announcements here. Dining room volunteers meet today after the service. Women's prayer Tuesday at 6.30. Worship practice Thursday at 6.30. Transformed Youth Bible Study Wednesday, the 14th. Group will meet Saturday, the 17th, 1 to 4. Kitchen volunteer meeting on the 18th. That's a week from today. Call to war. Less than two weeks. Be ready. I wish I could still participate. We have our usual prayer list, but we also need to understand there's nothing usual about prayer. Prayer is something we all need. You knew I was going to say it sooner or later, didn't you? Prayer is something we all need, and we need to do it for each other. We need to do it for each other. The ones on our list are Sister Tracy and the Garrett family and their church, Sister Nancy Monreal, Pam Barnett, Jonathan Malone, Braxton and Victoria, Natalie and her family, my wife Nancy, Dave Betts, Braden Manning. Good to see him in church last week. I haven't seen those kids in a long time. And David Peters and Denny Livingston both fighting cancer. When you're in a battle, it's good to know that God's with you. But it's also good to know that your brothers and sisters are with you as well. Think, Look around a minute. See who's not here. Think about it. Call them. Ask them, hey, can I give you some help? No judgment. You know, it's so easy to say, well, you're judging me. No, we're not. We're trying to be your brother and your sister. So if you're out there and you're not here because of a problem, and somebody calls you, we're not meddling. We're doing our duty as your brother and your sister. So let us be each other's friend, okay? Father, we thank you so much for the service today, for your spirit that moves among us, for the joy that you bring to us. And, Lord, we thank you for being here with us and watching over us. Thank you for the message, Lord, and the power that was in it. May we all remember the Father is waiting for us to return. And return we can do, no matter how dirty we've become. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Be with us. Amen.